Welcome back to Immortal Empires. Today we're going to be carrying on playing some more Boris Ursus. And at the end of the last episode, Boris I think we did have an upgrade Ursus for Theodore here. So let's go ahead and upgrade him. Let's see. We already have our replenishment. So I think now we will go ahead and get tools battle him. So an active ability plus 40 melee attack for all allies in range. That's going to be insane. Especially when he gets access to his warbear and he's with our other warbear riders. Oh wow, the melee attack is just going to be crazy good. But for now, I let's go ahead. Again. I think we can actually attack this this turn. No, we're not. We can't. We're not actually in range. So what's that army looking like? They have five units. The garrison's not too big. But I think we might have to, if we stop here, yes, indeed. will we be in range next turn? I think we will be. And Mother let's go ahead is. and recruit two more Kossars. And then next turn we can go ahead and attack this settlement. That should be that should be fine. We can also research a new technology. So we now have ice sculpt in. Let's go ahead and get cold storage. We get plus two percent casualty replenishment rate and plus ten growth. That will help us get to tier four. And then let's open our ice core because we can now get a frost maiden. So let's go ahead and spend one thousand two hundred gold. And we will go ahead and recruit a Frost Maiden. And I think every turn there'll be a pop up, and then we can shape how our Frost Maiden looks. So that's all looking good as well. And we have everything built for this turn. Let's check our diplomacy. <laughs> Nothing to have there. So let's go ahead to turn six. There we go Chaos Incursion and the monolith of Festalang. Our low level of devotion has resulted in a chaos uprising in the region of monolith of Festalang. Rally a defense immediately. The threat must be stamped out. Now sadly, we have a stack of units here which are currently threatening this um, settlement. And our garrison is very damaged. However, we really want to take the citadel. So I think we take the citadel and then we come back down to deal with this. This is going to cause us so many trouble, uh, so many issues because we can't reach this this turn anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead to the Howling Citadel. We will try ahead and win this battle and then we'll come back south. We can't really afford to have a second army either uh, to deal with that. We get a Pyrrhic victory here. If we auto resolved, we wouldn't take any casualties. However, I think we want to fight this one manually anyway. So let's go ahead and jump in for our first battle of the episode. Okay, so our first siege battle of the series here. I think we're actually going to go and attack from this flank. Just because there is a capture point ranked here. So if we go in through these two gates. I think we could easily capture this. And uh, at least remove the towers that threaten us. And then we have the main capture point just up there as well. They predicted a Pyrrhic victory. So hopefully we can do better than that. Um, we'll have to see. Let's go ahead and order these guys up. I think we're going to send in the war bears first. They should be able to deal plenty of damage to the gates. Of course they are quite strong. And then we just split our army 50-50, I think. So we got some Targard there. Let's go ahead and send in the Armoured Cossars with them as well. We've also got these Targard and this Armoured Cossar unit. And then how many of these do we have? I think we just split like this. There we go. We got five Cossars each as well. This should be enough to take each gate easily. And of course we also have Boris. Let's go ahead and send Boris on this side. And then we'll go ahead and send our Patriarch on this side. Just so it's nice and even. Let's go ahead and send in the characters first. We can go ahead and send in the War Bear Riders. That's all looking good. And then what we'll do with this. Is let's just go ahead and move these guys up. Uh, unfortunately we're going to have problems with the towers. Are there units up here? There are. There is Chaos Warriors of Corn up here, uh, which could be quite troublesome. Let's see. But we are going to go ahead and attack the gates. We can see the War Bear Riders going in. Sadly, we don't have any mounts yet. This might be a bit of a dangerous attack. Uh, in my testing, I actually auto resolved this battle, so we'll have to see how we do. Um, and this is basically as far as I got in testing. We can't really get up on the walls here. We could send our units, our Tar Guard, up on the walls there. Which I think we might do. And then let's go ahead and send this Targard up the walls as well. Uh, just so we can try and knock off the enemy. And maybe deal some damage to them. How's the gate health looking like? Uh, it's going down about half HP. Um, so that's all good. It looks like the enemies are actually getting off of the walls by themselves. 
It appears so. So we might actually not need the tar guard. So let's actually send the tar guard in here. I don't think we need to get up on the walls anymore. It should be absolutely fine. Let's see. Are we close to breaking down a gate yet? Let's go this side. Um, almost. There seem to be some wall bear riders already on the other side of the gate somehow. Not quite sure how that's happened. What about over here? Uh, this one's also slowly breaking. Our Corsairs are already firing into the settlement, so that's nice. Getting off some early damage. That would definitely help us uh, be quite useful there. And I think they're also okay in melee because they are a hybrid unit. Of course, they don't have very good melee defense or any armor, actually. So they're probably going to be very bad in melee. But they can dish out a little bit of damage, at least, um, if we need them to. There we go. So these guys finally breaking into the settlement. Let's go ahead and send in Boris. Um, I'm also going to send this down as well. Should be absolutely fine. And what about over here? They still haven't broken through over here. Yeah, almost, though. Well. There we go. They finally broke through on this side. Let's go ahead and use his abilities. And then we can also go ahead and send in this wall bear rider unit as well. And I think if we go in here... Uh, do we have our tar guard anymore? The tar guard are also in there, so let's go ahead and send them in. And then I think, for now, let's just go ahead and position these guys here, ready to fire in. And I think this should be fine. We also have this tar guard unit. Let's go ahead and send them in. I'm also going to do something like this. I think these Kossar units can actually go ahead and position up here if they wanted to. But I think the, the enemy might actually go up ahead and get on the walls if we do that. Let's just try one unit there and see what happens. We can also get this unit. Uh, there's already units on the walls there. Uh, so we can't really do that, unfortunately. They're not firing in though either, which is a little bit annoying. How are we doing over on this side of the battle? So one unit is almost dead. These war bear riders are taking a bit of damage. Maybe we just call them out. We could probably get these units up here, although they do have... They are, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, they are a gunpowder unit, so the firing arc isn't as good. Maybe I could get them in over here? I don't think they're going to fit. And I just realized these guys are actually, I should have told them to go up a ladder. Oh dear. I might have messed up a bit here. Some of them have made it up, though. That's good. Boris has taken a lot of damage for some reason. Oh, dear. Uh, Boris, we need to get you out of here. This could be very bad. Oh, dear. Boris, run. Get out of there, Boris. We need to go over here as well. This character's also taken a fair bit of damage. Our Patriarch. Let's try and get him out of the battle. This is not going super well so far. The balance of power has shifted to us a little bit. Oh, Boris is retreating. That's not good. So we do have some units up here. Uh, that's nice. I think we're going to have to tell them all to get up on the ladders there so we can fire them down. Um, same with these guys. Maybe we just go up on the ladders. These guys are getting off some shots. So that's good to see. Our Patriarch still has a bill of health. There we go. So he's managed to get out of the settlement. Um, I'm going to tell these guys to fire in. Maybe they'll get some more shots off then. We need to get this wall bear rider unit out vote. That's the one thing. I don't want to lose my wall bear riders. That's the one unit I'm not happy with losing. Let's go ahead and put Boris over there. I think he can still give some leadership then gonna put the wall bear riders over here too we do have some of these guys up on the walls now so that's nice uh, all of our cossa units actually going up onto the walls patriarch. our patriarch is safe so that's good as well let's see these guys are firing in these wall bear riders are still doing okay they still got 13 models uh, these guys have eight models so they're still alive balance of power is in our favor somehow not quite sure how. <laughs> um, we've taken a lot of damage. I think it was always going to be a close victory. Maybe I should get this tile guard unit out as well. I mean, I kind of don't want to lose them either. They are 
a very good unit after all. So maybe we should bring those out. Uh, I think it's time the Kossars were the ones that took some damage. Uh, this armoured Kossar unit is still doing okay though. So that's nice to see. And it looks like they are all positioning up on the walls now. If you guys can turn around and deal with them, that would be awesome. We could tell these guys to fire into them, maybe that will work. Looks like this Targard, both Targard units are retreating now. So it's a bit of a pain here. I think if we tell them to turn around and shoot as well, that should be fine. Same with these, turn them to turn and shoot. These two units, just tell them to shoot down there. Try and get some kills. So this armoured Cossa unit now is going into melee. Should be okay. Oh, have we lost a wolf's bear rider unit? Oh, we might have lost a wolf bear rider unit. Oh, I stopped paying attention. That was silly. Uh, this unit is also taking damage somehow. Wait, Boris, stop retreating. What are you doing? You weren't even under attack, were you? How are they taking damage? The tower is not hitting them, right? It's not able to reach. Oh, I think I've handled this quite poorly. These guys aren't even shooting at anything. They've just kind of stood there. Um, if you go like here, then they should be able to shoot down, I imagine. These guys are shooting in, so that's nice to see. I'm going to go ahead and position them. They can shoot in as well. These guys are taking damage. Oh, this guy's come outside to play. Okay, I see what's happening. Let's just go ahead and toggle this. He hasn't got much HP left. 500. 1 HP. Come on, one more kill. There we go, we've killed the enemy lord. So that's good. Let's get you guys back in here. So you're defended. Shouldn't take any damage from here. I think these guys, you can go ahead and capture the capture point. That would be awesome. And there we go. We've got the victory. Oh, <laughs> that was not very well managed on my part at all. Uh, Pyrrhic victory there, just as the auto resolve predicted. So we didn't do any better. And I think we might have lost our war bear riders. Oh, no. That's a terrible start to the campaign. However, we will get some more soon. So let's jump straight back to the campaign map here. There we go then. 3,700 XP. Uh, 3,300 gold and 39 devotion. Sadly, we did lose that wall bear rider unit. Um, but we will go ahead and get tier 4 as soon as we can. So we can replace them. It's not the end of the world. We will go ahead and My occupy Empire this settlement, of course. Goes. And we do gain a new trait. Plus 3 leadership when fighting against Cornate factions. And I think in future sieges, we should probably put our forces together rather than what we did there. Uh, Boris has gained access to his war horse though, as has Theodore. Um, so that's going to help out with their Boris, mobility a ton. And we're definitely going to need to get some replenishment here. Let's see. Boris has two level ups. Uh, Resatellite gives plus 10 growth in all provinces and no colonization cost faction wide. I think I'm going to get this just for the extra growth. It's extremely useful. And then let's go ahead and increase his armor as well. Make him a bit more tanky. We can use him as a frontline unit then. And then let's go ahead and buff uh, Tor's battle him. No, let's go ahead and get replenishment first. We can bump that to 6%. Just to replenish our army a little bit. The war bear riders, we still have one, so that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and recruit some more Kossars. That will be useful as well. And in the Howling Citadel, we can already upgrade this to Tier 2. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's also go ahead and build another roadhouse. Basically, we want to maximize growth because if we go to the building browser, as you can see, where are they? Uh, War Bear Riders. There we go. Tier 4 building. Well, as soon as we get this, we're going to have a full stack of them, hopefully, in Boris's army. Should be very fun. Now, uh, we've built everything we can. Let's go ahead and check in on the ice court. The maiden, a young neophyte of the ice court, must now choose the path that best serves our queen. Should she walk in the storm or through the blizzard? Uh, let's see. I think our first frost maiden, we're going to go with Tempest. And then on our next one, we can go with Ice and then we can compare them a little bit. So let's go ahead and pick Tempest. And then over the next few turns, we can see what kind of things pop up for her. 
now. Boris is... his army is heavily damaged. No, this army is taking attrition and they're not recruiting any more units. So that's good. However, um, we are heavily Hear damaged. So we'll have to see if we can deal with that one. And replenishment is going to take a few turns too. Let's go ahead and check diplomacy. Excess. The dwarves of Krakadrek uh, really don't like us. They're not going to do anything. So no diplomacy there. Let's go ahead to turn seven. Okay, so... The Chaos Rebel Uprising there do in fact attack the Monolith of Festalung. Um, Decisive defeat, there's nothing we can really do about that. So it's going to be an auto resolve. Hopefully that army will be a little bit weakened. Uh, not by much. Um, they have quite a few scary units. A lot of Marauders with great weapons. They also have Marauders of Zinch, of course, with Barrier. Um, we're probably going to struggle a little bit when we face them. Uh, but it should be fine. We'll come down and deal with them soon. And there we go. We have lost the settlement on the end turn. But other than that, uh, nothing else really happening. So Demon Boris's sale. army is somewhat replenished. I think we're going to have to start bringing them down here to the monolith. Uh, so let's Take go ahead head. and do that. In fact, stop a second. I think we should stop here just so we can get some re um, recruitment going. And let's go ahead and combine these two units. So if we merge them. And then we can recruit two more Kossar units. That way we have a four stack and at least all of our Kossars are healed. And we should still be able to reach this next turn. Uh, we also have an event in the Ice Court, so let's go ahead and check on this. Should the need to defend arise be it, his, uh, be it herself or loyal Kislevian troops, the Ice Maiden will not shirk from such duty and shall bring her powers and wisdom to bear. Should her attention be called to battle or to the motherland itself? So let's see. We can give her enemy hero action success chance minus 8% or plus 5 armor and plus 4 melee defense. I think we're going to do that one. So let's go ahead and make her a battler. Um, we'll see how she does in battle. Of course, we're going to use her spells and such. We can also go ahead and check our diplomacy. I really don't expect anything. Yeah, nothing happening here. So let's go ahead to turn 8. This is probably one of the campaigns I've played with the fastest turns at the start. Vindex declaring war then. Um, so we're going to have to deal with him to the west. Which is going to be troublesome for sure. There we go. So nothing really happening on the end turn. I don't actually see the enemy army. Are they in this settlement still? Um, I don't think so. There's no military presence here. And um, we can't even reach at this turn. That was a slight misplay on my part. Okay, they are still here. Um, maybe they will meet out to fight us we'll have to see and hopefully you don't hear that background noise there uh, as soon as there's some building work going on outside let's see we're still earning 73 gold per turn so that's all good nothing really popping up for our ice core to this turn either we do have a building slot we could upgrade this to tier two but i think i'm gonna wait and then get this to tier three first instead so let's check our diplomacy um, nothing really happening again no peace treaties either so let's go ahead to turn nine there we go, a new technology. So plus 2% casualty replenishment rate and plus 10 growth. That's going to get us closer to those wall bear riders. And we also gained a student research rate plus 10% for Theodore. So that's looking good as well. Theodore also gained a level up, so he's now level 6. Let's go ahead and upgrade towards battle him. So we get minus 25% cooldown uh, for this, which is going to be very nice. So that's looking good. Now, this is the battle. They do have a garrison of four as well. I think we should be able to win this. Let's go ahead and try and fight this army. In fact, the auto-resolve gives us a decisive victory here. Maybe I could also get that if I fought manually. I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and fight this one. This should be a nice sized battle to go ahead and get some action. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the battlefield. It's a fairly open battlefield. So I don't really have to worry about line of sight or anything. Let's go ahead and set up a formation. I think we're going to put the war bear riders on the front line. Uh, it might be a little bit questionable. We'll have to wait and see. And we're also going to go ahead and put these guys here. Just so they can buff them. Now let's also go ahead and put the armoured corsairs here as well. There we go. Hopefully you don't hear that background noise. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and put these guys here. And I think we're going to do a somewhat checkerboard formation. So let's go ahead and put these guys on the flanks as well. 
And they should be able to defend against uh, any charges here. And then with all of these units, let's see, if we do something like this, I think if we just put them like this, if they need to, they can go into melee. And then if we don't need them in melee, they should be free to fire upon the enemy as well. This should work. Uh, keyword being should there. Let's see. That looks like it's going to work all fine. Let's go ahead and start the battle. And I think the enemy will be the aggressors here as well. So we don't have to worry about charging them either. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. And there we go. In fact, they are chasing us. Fireball coming in. That's going to hit straight into our wall bear riders. And it does look like uh, the hounds are going to come around for a flank. That should be fine. Uh, I wonder how far around we're actually going to go. Looks like we're going to be able to get some shots in there though. Anyway, so that's fine. Looks like they are in range. Uh, let's go ahead and turn these guys around as well. They should all be able to deal with those. So if we fire off like this, we should be doing fine. There we go. We're already getting some shots off into the enemy on this side as well. Uh, the hounds and the cavalry were trying to flank. But they've decided against that eventually. It looks like we've dealt with these guys on this flank as well. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and tell them guys to attack here. And then with Boris and the wall bear riders, they're attracting some attention. Let's go ahead and slow these enemies down just a tad more. Should be all good there. Um, you guys get back into position as well. There we go. That should all be good there. In fact, they're going to tell you to attack in here. That's fine. Let's just turn them just a tad so they can fire into this side. Uh, let's go ahead and activate these abilities. The Warbear Riders will be doing a little bit, a bit better of a job there as well then. We can also fire off here. Looks like the Horse Cavalry is also getting some shots off. Let's go ahead and do something like this. And I think this is actually working really well so far. Uh, so we don't have to worry too much here. In fact, other than the Enemy Lord, we've done plenty of damage. So checkerboard formation does, in fee, uh, does indeed work pretty well. Um, these guys need to come back here. Don't run off. I'm going to try and move back this melee unit because they are already heavily damaged. Let's do something like this. Should be fine. Looks like everyone is retreating, so that's nice. There we go. Two more units retreating as well. So now I think it's just a case of trying to kill uh, the enemy lord here. And it should be enough to actually get the win. Uh, let's turn... Uh, we'll keep you guys facing that way because some of the enemy are indeed returning to the battle here. These guys should automatically attack here as well. There we go. Enemy Lord is retreating. If we can get the kill on him though. This unit just took a ton of damage. What I might do is tell everyone else to just hold fire. And then we can send the War Bear Riders to go and finish the enemy Lord here. They should be. We can also cast this. I forgot about this. This does enough. Their leadership and their Viger and their speed. So the War Bear Rider should finish him off. And that's beautiful stuff. Much better than the siege battle earlier in the episode. Come on, guys. I believe in you. Get the kill. They're trying. There we go. So a nice decisive victory there. So we'd lost 93 models. That's not too bad. We do come out with a decisive victory as well. Uh, let's see who got the majority of the kills. I think it was very split actually. So this uh, armoured Corsair unit did very well. Um, and all of our Corsair units get in roughly the same number of kills there. So let's jump straight back to the campaign map. So there we go. 2,100 XP, 2,000 gold and another 15 devotion. That's all looking good. And we can go ahead and reoccupy the monolith of Vesterlang now. So we have managed to recover from this. We've gained the capital as well. So all in all, I think things are looking okay considering we did lose a war bear rider. Boris also gaining another level up. So he's level 7 now. Let's see. Heroic resilience. It could be good, but it only activates if hit points are less than 50% base. Um, so I think you gain plus 14 melee defense and plus 8 leadership. Um probably beneficial however i think maybe we should just go for the hit points we already increased our armor so we now we have 124 armor and now i think we go for the hit points so let's gain another seven percent hit points here that should Excellent. also be fine now where do we want to go next we have to worry about the cinch to the west however 
I believe this is their last settlement here. So if we can take the burning monolith, then this cornate faction will also be gone. And then we only have one enemy to worry about. So I think we do go to the burning monolith next. And then we make our way west uh, to deal with Zinch. Um, this is going to be the theme of the series, I think. Constantly going backwards and forwards until we can afford a second army. But let's go ahead and build another building. Let's go ahead and build the roadhouse uh, in this settlement. And we're not going to upgrade these to tier 2 just yet. Uh, that's fine. Let's go ahead and look in the ice court as well. The frost moon is when Manslieb rises high above its evil twin. To mark such a benign event, the ice court bestows an arcane gift upon a few Kislev's warriors. But should the boon go to the cavalry or infantry, the, the maiden must decide. So, we can gain plus 7% weapon strength for infantry units or plus 10% charge bonus for cavalry units. Now, cavalry would definitely be more beneficial long term. So let's go ahead and get the cavalry one because she's going to buff warbear riders even more than they already will be. We can also research a new technology. Hmm, what should we go for here? So we have missile resistance. Uh, we're not really using those units. Melee defense for Cossars, armored Cossars, and Stretzel. And we got construction cost, armor plus 10 for war sleds. Campaign movement range plus 5% for all armies sounds extremely useful. So let's go ahead and get that one. And I think if we check our diplomacy, there's going to be nothing. Cracker Draco actually 1.6 now. I'm not sure what's changed because they still have zero opinion of us. Um, but we're getting closer to a non-aggression pact there. We'll have to see if anything actually comes for that though. But for now, let's go ahead to turn 10. And we have a new mission. Capture and occupy the following settlement, the Port of Secrets. And so that's when we're going to go west and do a zinch. That's nice. If we do it within six turns, we gain a bonus 500 gold. However, let's see. Let's say that's like one, two turns, three, four, five, six. Maybe we can make it in time. But we'd get 1,500 gold for that. Mutation, deception, and sorcery must foul blights these lands. Drive the Waven's twisted slaves from them. And so we do have that. And we gain a new follower as well. Advotica Distiller. Oh, I always get to have one of those. Plus one control in the local province. There we go. And we've actually gained a new weapon, the Shard Blade. Minus 5 corruption in the local province. Minus 10% recruitment cost for the Lord's Army. Plus 6 melee attack. Plus 12 bonus versus large. And the new ability, Shard Blade. So it has two uses. And it deals direct damage to all enemies in range. So that's going to be very nice. And Boris has that. And there we go. There's the quest that we had for obtaining that item. Reach rank 8 with the following character, Boris Ursus. Carved from Norsken glaciers and said to hold a permanent uh, hoarfrost about its form that can cut flesh and bone better than elven steel. The shard blade is a deadly polearm once wielded by the Red Tar. It was recovered along with Boris Ursus, who was found in the ice and saved by the motherland herself. However, the shard's blade latent power seems to have been affected by the Tsar's enforced hibernation. The patriarchs of the great orthodoxy have studied the weapon and declared that it might will return once Radi Boka has regained the power, influence and love of his people that he had before the fall of the river Ninksk. Uh, so we do now have that weapon. And we have, of course, completed that quest as well to gain it. But sadly, that's all I have time for today. Next episode, we're going to go to the Burning Monolith, capture our starting province, and then we're going to head off west to go ahead and do a zinch. We're going to take the Port of Secrets and then make our way north to take the Crystal Spires. And then we're also going to have to go west because somewhere over here is the Volcano's Heart. And then we're likely very much going to have to come back east to do a Slanesh. And Archaeon, I think, is up here. So, plenty of battles to come. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back tomorrow with another one at 1pm. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.